Hello everybody, my name is Kitty Zo. welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about why I joined the Navy. If you guys want to see more videos like this, such as story times or things about the Navy, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more videos. I have been in the Navy for five years now. I'm a second class petty officer. Um, and this is, video's just gonna be about why I decided to join in the first place. So it all started off in 2013. I was going from a community college into a university to finish my bachelor's degree, which is in criminal justice and sociology. I was looking for a way to come up with a difference in cost for that. There's a big difference between being in community college and going to university. So one of my options was to be a reservist. So I originally talked to a recruiter in 2013. Um, from there, uh, I got some more information on it. Um, I wanted to go into the field where I was studying, which was criminal justice. So in the Navy, there's a rate called uh, Master at Arms, or MA for short. In other branches, they call it an MP for military police. So it's basically just the military's police force. They did have ROTC at my university, and that was also an option. But unfortunately, they only had Army ROTC. And I actually have a tattoo on my hand and no other branch except for the Navy accepts tattoos on your hand. So I automatically disqualified for it. And I didn't really want to go Army. I was, if I was going to join the military, I wanted to go Navy. So the reason why I didn't end up going reservist right away was I really just wanted to focus all of my attention on my education and finishing my degree. So I decided that, you know, if I was going to join the Navy, I wanted to go active duty. And that would be, you know, decided after I graduate. Moving forward, in 2014, towards the end of it, um, I had been a year and a half into an application for the Chicago Police Department. The Chicago Police Department takes about two years from the time that you put in the application until a decision's been made. So I was a good way through. Um, but at the end of 2014 is when Ferguson happened. And if you guys don't know about Ferguson, um, it's kind of a lot like what we have going on today. Um, there was a young man, an 18 year old, Michael Brown, who was shot and killed by police officers when he was unarmed. And after a grand jury decided not to indict the police officers who shot and killed him, uh, there was a lot of protests that broke out. And the climate was very toxic towards police. And I just, it wasn't, it wasn't a good time to join the police force then. So I really didn't wanna be a part of an organization that promoted the marginalization and discrimination against anybody who was um, a minority or oppressed in any way. So in 2015, in January, I got a call from a recruiter from the same place where back in 2013, I had put in an application. The recruiter asked me if I was still interested in joining the Navy. So at the time, I really wasn't. Um, it wasn't really something I had thought of, but when she called, I kind of thought, you know, what's the harm with talking with her? That could, you know, it could always be my plan B or my plan C even. Um, so I started looking into it more and I came across a program that I actually thought I would like, which was to be an officer of Intel. So I started talking to an officer recruiter and asked him about the, the officer of Intel program. He basically told me that he had sent up somebody the same year who had the exact same degree as me, graduated from a better school with a better GPA, 
and she didn't get the position. And he told me that my best chance for getting that position was to either enlist first and then go officer or go what's called SWO, S-W-O, or Surface Warfare Officer. When I asked him about what SWO was, what he described to me kind of sounded more like I would be a general manager um, where the enlisted people would have the knowledge in the field and I would basically just manage them. And it didn't really seem like a good fit for me. I've worked a lot of civilian jobs, including in manager positions. It was always better to hire from within the company with people who enjoyed the company, who had knowledge of the company, than it was to just hire people with general manager experience. People who are hired just to manage don't really know a whole lot about the structure of the company and how things work, whereas the actual workers would have a better understanding of what goes on in the company and how it's best run. So it didn't really strike me as something I wanted to do. I would rather have the knowledge in the field that I would be working in. So I decided to just enlist and if I chose to, I could put it in a package for officer. So after I made the decision to enlist, it took about five months to get all of my paperwork together. Um, I was coming in a little older and so I had to gather, you know, more paperwork. Whereas I think if you came in younger, didn't have any medical issues, anything like that, then you come straight in and it doesn't take very long to enlist. So I went to a place called MEPS. Um, when you go to MEPS, that's where you pick your job assignment or in the Navy, we call it your rate. I had wanted to go IS, which was intelligence specialist. It'd be the enlisted version of the officer job that I wanted. But when I went, they only offered me three jobs and none of them were IS. So MEPS is kind of finicky with what jobs they have available. They could have one job one day and not have it the next. So when I went, they offered me IT, which is information technology, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's working on computers and whatnot. And I didn't really want to go IT uh, it sounded more like a desk job, even though now I know that, you know, it's not really so much a desk job. Um, they also offered me AO, which is Aviation Ordnance, and I did not want to be an AO. AO is basically just loading ammunition onto aircrafts, and I did not want just to be a physical laborer. The other job that they offered me was what's called AECF, or Advanced Electronic Computer Field. And that, there's two different rates that you could be. You could either be an FC, or Fire Controlman, or you can be an ET, or Electronic Technician. And I didn't really know the difference between the two. So when I asked, somebody had told me that if you go FC, you can get a job that's called Tomahawk. And Tomahawk is, you know, they shoot missiles. And for some reason, uh, the scene from Iron Man played in my head. The one where Tony Stark let off all the missiles behind him and he was just standing there and was like, yep, I did that. And so I just decided, you know, advanced electronic computer field, that sounded pretty cool. So why not pick that one? So I picked that rate and I asked, you know, how would you know if you're going to be an FC or an ET? And they told me it's, it's pretty much decided for you and you really, I didn't know this then, but it's decided for you once you get out of boot camp. And after you get out of boot camp, they tell you whether you're going to be an FC or an ET. So you really don't have any choice in the matter. After I had made my decision, the only other decision I had to make was when I was gonna leave for boot camp. I had just graduated university. So this was in late May, early June. And I was looking to, to start going to boot camp relatively shortly from the time that I graduated so that way I wouldn't have to worry about finding short-term employment in the meantime. So they said that uh, they had a program leaving at the end of June, and then they had one leaving in July. 
So I decided, you know, why not go in July where I could have a little more time to prepare myself before going to boot camp. Then they told me that if you leave in June, they'll give me a $5,000 signing bonus. So of course I was like, well, I guess I'm leaving in June then. <laughs> um, so I did ship out on June 24th, 2015. And spoiler alert, I did end up getting FC. And a few years after that, I got to specialize and become a Tomahawk tech. So I am a fire controlman, Tomahawk tech. So this has been my story about why I joined the Navy. If you guys are thinking about joining or have other questions, such as more information on the various rates, I don't know a whole lot about aviation rates. I was never on an aircraft carrier and never really interacted with them. But if you have other rates that you guys want to discuss, uh, give me a comment and I'll try and get back to you. Um, I'll make other videos about the topic and tell a few more stories about my naval career and maybe even tell you guys why I decided not to re-enlist. So, if you guys could, I'm starting this new YouTube channel. Um, please support and just like my video, share it, subscribe, and be on the lookout for more videos by me. Thank you guys. Bye.